So what we're looking at here is fundamental theorem algebra paired with the linear factorization theorem. We're giving you the book definitions. And we take a look at the fundamental theorem algebra, and it's telling us that um, a polynomial with the degree n, where n is greater than or equal to 1, must have at least one complex root. Linear factorization theorem helps us to separate out what the factors would look like in a particular any particular polynomial. So we're going to start with an example, and this example says we're going to find a fourth degree polynomial with the real roots negative two, two, complex root i, such that f of three, when you substitute x equals three into this function, produces negative one fifty. So the real goal here with linear factorization is we're going to be able to determine if there is some kind of uh, coefficient. Uh, normally you check this to see if there's a coefficient other than, than 1. Otherwise we could just take the roots and distribute and come up with our, our, our function. So what we're going to do is we're going to utilize this factorization theorem and just rewrite for now. What the linear factorization theorem looks like. So the first thing you'll notice is that we wrote four different sets of parentheses to represent fourth degree. So there's four possible roots. Next work we're going to do is we're going to look at what we can substitute in. So we do not know the coefficient. We know one of the roots is positive 2. The other root is real negative 2. Now the other two we can say x minus i but we also have to utilize the conjugate so plus i which is really negative i as a root. And what we'll do is we'll take these and we will distribute. Distributing yields us x squared minus 4 and x squared plus 1. And we just continue the process to solve if you take a look at what we've done here, um, we've taken and I've showed the distribution of the two bi binomials here and then uh, combined like terms to produce x to the fourth minus 3x squared minus 4. So at this point, we, we're not stuck. We still have this other piece of the puzzle that it gives us that we're going to utilize now. So we know that f of 3, so if I substitute f of 3, we know that's going to equal negative 150. And then you have a sub n, and just substitute 3 in for x. So we substitute that into the equation, and now the only thing left to solve for is a sub n, or the coefficient. When we do that, we get 50, and when we solve for a sub n, we can now see that the coefficient is negative 3. Utilizing the step we had before, we can now say what the polynomial is. So we know that negative 3 is the coefficient, and that'll go to these three terms that we computed earlier. So overall, our polynomial, now we found a polynomial, negative 3x to the fourth plus 9x squared plus 12. And utilizing linear factorization, we have performed the operations to get us to a polynomial of the fourth degree. Notice, um, really the goal here was to figure out what the coefficient was. The other thing I want to point out is, remember that we want to use the conjugate for these complex roots. So later on, um, you'll start to see other ones, that other complex roots, such as, uh, let's say, they say the root is 4 minus 3i, so we should know that the other root should be 4 plus 3i. And if we put that into this linear factorization theorem, we'll start to see that that's x minus 4 minus 3i. And then the other one is x minus 4 plus 3i. That'll come in use when you get into problems that are a little more um, difficult than just using the root complex root of i. 
but know and see that we have minus on both of those, the conjugate is important to know for the complex numbers.